There was a time indeed they used to shake hands with their hearts, but that's gone, son. Now they shake hands without hearts, while their left hands search my empty pockets. And that's a piece from veteran Nigerian poet Gabriel Okara, who died recently. But thankfully, he has left us with a lot of spoken words to enjoy. Welcome to Art House. I'm Melinda Akinlami. On today's episode, we'll be looking at a group exhibition at the Thought Pyramid Art Center in Lagos. Then go to Oyo State to see a solo show which will really inspire you. But now let's take some arty quotes from the veteran poet and we'll be right back. We begin with this annual juried art exhibition, which began with a competition. The 10 young artists whose works of art were outstanding were selected, and this show at the Thought Pyramid Art Center in Lagos is part of their reward. It's the second edition of the annual juried art exhibition and competition called next of kin. These are the works of art that show what the future generation of artists are up to. It's a juried art exhibition that is hosted annually for the upcoming Maths Masters. It's just um, a platform to showcase the new one, encouraging them for, to come up. Many of them earlier participated in an art competition which was organized by the Thought Pyramid Center in Lagos. And these images are the ones which struck a chord when the panel of judges were picking the final 10 from 100 entries. My works are all um, part of a series that I titled Zebra Problem. It addresses the prevalence of child abuse, both sexual and non-sexual abuse. But I want to focus on sexual abuse because two of my works are actually on that particular topic. For some time now, we've had issues concerning this particular problem that we're having. Um, we've had parents who give out their teenage daughters out to older men. We've had little children who have been abused. So I've decided to use my work as a voice for these children who are not heard. This work is titled um, Same Intention with Love. It talks about um, human relationship with either his or environment and the relationship between human beings. And as you can see, we have a couple here and we have um, other people at the background, which I think are, which I would say they are distractions. And I realized that when it comes to relationship, be it um, um, relationships in business, friendship, whatever relationship. Third parties have a way of influencing the relationships. But in this particular world, you can see that the couple decided to be one together, not minding distractions in the environment. So, what are these young bloods bringing to the table? From trendy topics to human angle stories to religious affiliations, it's a no holds barred platform. These works are done with acrylic on canvas. Uh, my works explore things like religion, politics, uh, you know, basically things that people, people that affect people in, in Nigeria around me. I, my works are inspired also by, um, you know, if I hear conversation in the bus, if I hear people talk about something, I just like I, I like to develop on these things and you know and paint them, and uh, here they are. My work revolves around the humans, but. The basic one I exhibited here today, they're actually referring to some political issues, the way people are disgracefully paid, the way people tend not to have their salaries on time, and the way people are suffering. So some of the pieces I exhibited here today, like one that I exhibited, the first one titled um, Options Available, talking about how people tend to 
so far why they are in a land of plenty. You know, the nation we are in, people have, there, there's enough, there's enough human resources, a lot of mineral resources, but people still struggle. People still struggle to, to survive. Why? Because people are not paid adequately and people are trying to look for a way to, for balance for themselves. So the piece there, talking about um, how someone was supposed to take a bike home, but because of inflation of price for no justifiable reason, so she had to take a walk home. That's the one involving the bikers, like I can see up there. There's another one talking about where is my profit. That one shows how people just end little and eventually spend all of them on feeding alone. Why there's no source of savings or nothing to go on with eventually. So that's where my profit is coming from. The person sucking the orange, she's sucking away her profit because that's the only thing she has to live on. You know what that means to, to survive. There's a Yoruba concept of um, Sharon Kosheni, called Sharon Kosheni. So basically talking about humans that can, uh, that can also be animals as well. This was where the idea stemmed uh, from originally. And then when I started um, exploring the idea more, I began to use the um, attributes of these animals to describe the humans that I, uh, that I use as subject matters in my paintings. Um, I started off by creating a piece uh, of myself, a piece of myself. Uh, where I had a monkey head instead of my actual head and um, I was talking about how I was made, made a fool of by the National Youth Service Corps and um, uh, the works behind me right now, the works I'm showing at the, for the next of kin, uh, one, of them has, one of them is a female uh, figure, nude, with a monkey head, which is talking about rape. Um, the other one is a male figure. Uh, with a yellow beret, that's a self-portrait of myself, discussing my insecurities as a person, as a human, um, all the insecurities I had to deal with growing up, feeling like I was ugly, feeling like I was incompetent, I wasn't enough in myself, and growing up to accept myself. So it, the, the piece is an acceptance of myself, like I'm, I've come to the realization that I am beautiful in myself and I can be more. And um, also, I use it as um, a voice in the ongoing struggle against racial discrimination in other parts of the world. Um, the H&M scandal from last year was the basic inspiration for that piece. More explanations pour in. I'm not just an hyperrealism artist, I'm also a conceptual artist. So if you can see behind me, the works are not just a single picture. They are pictures that lead after each other. There's one that has two images that transcend into each other. So that's like an effect, that's what makes my work unique. The conceptuality of it is what it depicts. So um, the story behind my works, one of them lost is, is actually based on an emotional state, emotional feeling. Yeah, like the state of mind of the model, the muse in the picture. So, and the other ones, Palava, Palava is focused on the My work talks about the uh, African way of, of bringing the children, specifically here in Nigeria, the western part, which I, I, I want to talk about, the western part with, with the Yorubas, the way we uh, bring our children, our fem most especially the female children. We engage them in the domestic work, also our own work to do, like to wash the plates, to sweep, to cook, so that when they are independent on their own, they can, they can do all they, can, they like. But I see the world today. We are uh, taken away by this thing called civilization. We don't value our culture anymore. It's like borrowing uh, the Western culture and forgetting about our own. 
today, we see most of the women in our society, they, they, can, they can barely do these things. The concept behind it is that uh, behind any plan, behind any, any goal or any dream that a man has, the elements of money cannot be ruled out. Money is indispensable. The Thought Pyramid Art Center wants the artists to be comfortable in their own skin, an essential tool if they want to take the art world by storm. The winner is going to have um, residency with us for four weeks, fully funded in Delta actually. Then the runner-ups with their money will also get um, these studios so that they can understudy most of the great artists that are there already. So this just helps boost their work and then these works are going to be up for two weeks so people still come in buy and all that so if you notice most of the prizes they are subsidized already no one is above um, 300 per se so that it can be just come buy and go kind of thing so that easy to encourage artists and other upcoming ones coming here and seeing what's happening to give them that push that at least there's a gallery that is taking it upon them to give them more ways to go forward it said that the youth are the future, and these works speak volumes about the future, and the older generation can beat their chest that Nigeria will keep taking her pride of place in the art. I like the title, Next of Kin, just tells you the artists who will be filling the shoes of the veterans when they are no longer with us. But some of them are online as well, so let's check out their works of art. These are the works of art you sent in this week. We do encourage you to keep them coming. Coming up on the program, our artists for this week. Plus, we go to Ibadan or your state for a solo exhibition by a passionate artist. Do join us again. Veteran Nigerian poet, whose works have been translated into several languages. He was born in Bayelsa State, South South Nigeria, and had his early education at the Government College of Mahia in Abia State. 